It's not inevitable that history uh, should repeat itself. It depends on whether you learn from history. Uh, and as Edmund Burke famously remarked, those uh, who fail to learn from history are destined always to repeat it. No, I think it's not a failure of historians. I think it's, it's, it's a failure to read. So someone like Tony Blair or George Bush were not historians. Uh, they went into Afghanistan a second time not knowing the lessons of the past. But, I mean, int intriguingly, one of the people that read my book was Karzai. Uh, and I got called to, um, to uh, the, the ARG in, in the Citadel and questioned by him for over eight hours about the lessons to be learnt from this. Um, and uh, he, he clearly was trying to learn the lessons of history. So if you have someone that sees the lessons of history, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it is something that can be learned from. But how to interpret history is a different matter. Again, you know, it's not necessarily easy to interpret. I think every historian has got to write history as they see it. Uh, but, you know, be aware that what they see is just one perspective uh, of many. And uh, the same event, you know, if we were to have a, a car crash now uh, on the road, it would look quite different from the point of perspective of each car and the passers-by on either side of the road. The, the things look different from different perspectives. And uh, the job of a historian, obviously, is to try and put different perspectives together and to try and do it as neutrally uh, as he or she can. But it's uh, obviously every historian is coming from a particular perspective, his own, and uh, there is no such thing as completely objective accounts. They're, they're always coloured by your upbringing, your experience, your own point of view. Personally, as a, as, as a writer of history, I try to understand what happened by reading as many different accounts as one can from as many different perspectives, and then give as true an, a, an, a true picture of, 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 of an event, having seen, having read the different perspectives, just like a judge in a trial hears completely different accounts of the same crime, uh, and then has to, you know, make an effort to understand what has happened and interpret it. This is the same thing that a historian is doing, but looking back further back. With, but on the way, of course, you, you inherit the biases of your of your of your your the versions that you're reading, and uh, and um, if the prejudices of those accounts echo your own, then uh, from, a, from a different perspective it can look as if you are biased. Uh, so there's no way out of it, but, I, but certainly, you know, I don't think the historian, uh, good historians are ever card-carrying members of one party. The, the, the job is to understand, and that implies empathy, uh, not single-minded sympathy. No, I mean, you can't. Uh, that breaks every rule of, of non-fiction to make anything up. If, if there are blanks, you, 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 well, you try very hard to fill them in with, with, just by dint of research. You go out and find, um, a, a look and look and look for a, a, something that will fill the missing piece of the jigsaw. Um, but it's, uh, you know, often there are times when, when there are holes. But the particular kind of history I write, I tend to take choose subjects which are massively written about and then choose, a, choose quite a small time frame. So like in a novel or a film that you're dealing with just a, one year or a couple of years, not 150 years um, over a vast area. I like to be able to, I mean, Af that Afghan story I was telling today is you know, mainly Kabul, 1839 to 42. Do you have, to, there are many kinds of history uh, there are br some brilliant historians who do not tell stories of any sort. Uh, I mean, the kind of Irfan Habib story, uh, form of economic history is closer to social science. It's history of science. Uh, but at the other end of the spectrum, there are writers such as Ram Guha or, or, or Simon Sharma uh, who write beautifully and tell stories as well as any, uh, uh, as any novelist. Uh, so uh, it depends what kind of history you're writing. But certainly, to be a good narrative historian, you have both to be a good researcher, a good historian, and a good storyteller. Correct.